Welcome to LMU Community TV News. I'm Allison Barnett. Thanks for joining us. Let's take a look at the stories we have for you today. Bullying is not a normal rite of passage. That was the message County Commissioner Juanita Honeycutt sent during a recent Claiborne County School Board Committee meeting. The commissioner introduced a new anti-bullying program called Youth Max to the committee. The program is designed to teach students their own worth and to stand up for themselves. Youth Max helps students understand why people bully others. Honeycutt says the program was created not to prevent bullying, but to change the culture inside a school setting. Youth Max teaches skills to take the bully's power away by showing less fear. Honeycutt will present the new program to the school board during the next regular meeting. A wave of new laws is set to go into effect in Tennessee beginning on January 1st. Residents of the state will see more than 30 new laws, with the majority of them beginning on New Year's Day. WAT in Knoxville reports that one of the new laws talks about sanctuary cities inside the state. Beginning January 1st, state and local government will not be allowed to adopt sanctuary policies of any nature. Another major law that is going into effect at the beginning of the year involves abortions. Ultrasounds will be required prior to getting an abortion. The person giving the ultrasound will also offer opportunities to learn the results. That will be required if a heartbeat is found. Middlesbrough City employees could soon have to provide drug tests as part of their job. Mayor-elect Rick Nelson released in a statement to WRIL beginning in January he will be strictly enforcing Middlesbrough's drug testing policy for city employees. Nelson says the move will protect the city workers and the public. The city currently has a drug testing policy, but Nelson says it is not practiced. The ordinance ha also has a subsection on reasonable suspicion testing. Under that portion of the ordinance, a department head can call for drug testing if they suspect an employee is under the influence of drugs or alcohol. Nelson will take over as Middlesbrough mayor on January 1st. A traffic stop in Lee County landed one man behind bars on Wednesday. The Lee Daily Register reports 35-year-old Robert Pennington was charged with possession of a Schedule 1 narcotics, possession of a Schedule 3 narcotic, and possession of a Schedule 4 narcotic. Sheriff Gary Parsons says deputies were patrolling Morgan Avenue in Pennington Gap when they saw Pennington driving a Chevy Trailblazer. Officers knew Pennington had a warrant out for his arrest and pulled him over. During a vehicle search, police found a bag of methamphetamine, syringes, and several pills. They also found a 22 caliber handgun in the vehicle. All items were seized following Pennington's arrest. Now let's take a look at your community calendar of events coming up over the next couple of weeks. Christmas at the Clayborne County Library will be held on December 15th at 11 a.m. Enjoy your story time, snacks, and more fun. You can also meet and greet with Santa, who will be on hand. Santa Claus is also coming to the Harrogate Book Station on December 15th from noon to 2 p.m. Ages 3 to 12 are invited. Games, snacks, and crafts will be on Santa's agenda. That was your community calendar, but stay with us. It's coming up after the break. Brandon Burke will be bringing you your sports report right here on LMU Community TV News. Hi, I'm Dr. Shields, and I'm a physician and the medical director at LMU Medical Clinics. This is a brief announcement about keeping LMU and you healthy during the upcoming flu season. Influenza, or flu for short, is a virus that causes fever, body aches, and upper respiratory symptoms like cough, runny nose, and sore throat. It is transmitted through the air and can even be spread on objects touched by someone who has the flu. The virus spreads easily from person to person and is most active from October through March. There are three things you can do to prevent becoming ill with the flu. First, get vaccinated. The most effective way of preventing the flu is to get the flu vaccine every year. The vaccine does not give you the flu or make you sick. The vaccine may not be 100% effective, however, it does offer significant protection and lessen the symptoms should you get the flu. The CDC recommends everyone six months and older be vaccinated before the flu season begins. Number two, wash your hands. Stop the spread of germs and protect yourself with frequent hand washing with soap or alcohol-based hand sanitizer. And third, if you are sick, stay home. Should you become ill with flu-like symptoms of fever, sore throat, cough, limit your contact with others. Schedule an appointment as soon as possible with LMU Medical Clinic or your healthcare provider. There are antivirals that may be indicated if started within 48 hours of symptoms. Stay home until you are fever-free for 24 hours without over-the-counter medications like Motrin or Tylenol. I'm Dr. Shields, and this has been a brief announcement about keeping LMU and you healthy during the upcoming flu season. What do we know about learning? 
it takes place beyond the pages of a book. We learn by exploring, by trying new things, by connecting, by sharing. We learn by taking chances and dreaming big. At Lincoln Memorial University, learning is beyond the books. It's everywhere. Guess what? I have some news for you. There's free food right there, junk food. Do you see that truck? Oh, jeez. It's a two Michelin star chef. All for free, ladies and gentlemen. All for free. Here we have a panzanella with summer vegetables and pesto. Enjoy. Okay. How we doing? Fantastic. So what do you got going on underneath that plate there? This food is really about to be thrown away. Yeah. Bro? Really? Is, there, is there something wrong with this food? Where did you get it from? From farmer's markets. They put aside the ugly vegetables and the ugly fruits. Yeah. Carrot top, soft avocados. It was all food that was going to be discarded. Even the drink you had is made from like a little bruised peach. Did it taste a little it's like bruised? Great. It was good. The average person throws away 24 pounds of food a month. That's a lot. Isn't that a lot? Go visit savethefood.com for more information. Thank you. Junk food time! I love taking care of my mom. It wasn't easy at first. She learned how to better communicate her needs. And you learned how to not ignore yours. I discovered how to make healthier meals. And I discovered how much I enjoyed them. Becoming a caregiver is a learning experience for everyone. Find articles, tips, and tools from experts and others who have been in your place. The Caregiving Resource Center at aarp.org caregiving. Welcome back. In a quiet week of Lincoln Memorial Athletics, with the primary focus being final exams for LMU students, all that the Rail Splitter basketball programs can do is wait. Wait for this Saturday afternoon when they'll both hit the road in South Atlantic Conference action. Their early season league schedule not letting up. The Queens Royals meeting Lincoln Memorial in Charlotte, North Carolina in what's sure to be an intense sack doubleheader. The Lady Rail Splitters and head coach Crystal Evans will get the day started with an, with an altered 12 o'clock noon tip-off in the Queen City, thanks to an abundance of snow expected in Charlotte. And after the events of last Saturday, LMU is styling and profiling after a 10-point triumph over Coker in their third consecutive outing from Harrogate. The Lady Rail Spitters were able to go two for three in that home stretch, battling number 11 Carson Newman until the end last Wednesday in an eventual 11-point loss that was tighter than the final score indicated, but then bouncing back in Tex Turner Arena just three days later by taming the Cobras 76-66. Six games into the 2018 through 19 campaign, Lincoln Moyle is still trying to work the kinks out and balance some consistency with their still young group of talent. Unable to string consecutive wins thus far in a seesaw season, entering Saturday at 3-3 three three overall with a 1-1 one one sack resume. The Blue and Gray got the month of December off on the right foot in that aforementioned win over Coker. And in an unusually busy month upcoming, with five contests still remaining through the impending winter break, three of them in South Atlantic Conference territory, the Lady Rail Splitters will hope to stay one step ahead of the bottom half of the league when they face Queens on the road. It was a season to forget for the Royals a year ago, going a dreadful 4-22 and in route to missing the postseason. Although on this occasion, Queens takes on LMU with both clubs, holding the same record of 3-3. Three three. The Royals still yet to get out of the box, however, in sack play, going 0-2 against Lenore Ryan and Anderson, the latter a 21-point setback. You can visit www.lmurailsplitters.com for full details on Coach Evans' group's important final month of the calendar year, looking to stay on track in the sack against Queens at noon on Saturday. And roughly two hours after the Lady Rail Splitters tussle with the Royals in the Levine Center, the LMU men's basketball squad prepares for a major clash with Queens in Charlotte, tipping off at 2 o'clock p.m., again bumped up due to the expectance of snow in the area, with revenge on the mind of head coach Josh Schertz's club. Based off of last season's incredible Southeast Regional Finals appearance in another banner year for the program, the Rail Splitters began this season slotted at number three in the nation across the preseason rankings, largely on record reputation alone, with loads of questions regarding arguably the youngest lineup in the now decade that Schertz has been roaming the sidelines in Harrogate. 
Lincoln Memorial could not balance those, those lofty expectations early, stumbling to their first one and two start to a season since Schertz's very first campaign at the university. Although since that point, the rail splitters have been playing at an elite level, winners of their last four, including the opening two South Atlantic Conference matchups. Beginning said winning streak with a 50-point thrashing over Payne College, LMU then traveled to UVA Wise, where they gathered their first true road W of the season by besting the Cavaliers in a lightning quick bout. Returning to Harrogate for their most recent two games, Lincoln Memorial has looked nearly unstoppable, surging past a previously unbeaten Carson Newman team 90-68 for their fifth straight win over their biggest rival, following that up with a 99-72 triumph last Saturday over the Coker Cobras, where they now stand at 5-2 along with a 2-0 sack performance. Falling out of the NABC National Poll following their slow start, but that now regaining consideration for entry back into the rankings, the rail splitters will face perhaps their tallest test of the fall on Saturday, facing a Queens unit that has already ranked themselves at number 16 thanks to an 8-2 start to the season. Matching Lincoln Memorial with a 2-0 conference record, which includes a 7-point win at then number 23 Lenore Rhine and a 2-point nail-biter against Anderson, the Royals were last seen blowing out Virginia Union by 20 points on Monday for their third straight win. Of course, just one season removed from an appearance in the NCAA Tournament's Final Four. The same postseason where Queens upended the rail splitters in Tex Turner in the Sweet 16, which ended a historic year for the Blue and Gray. Nine months after facing ultimate heartbreak in the regional finals, Lincoln Memorial will continue their recent rivalry with the Royals with vengeance on their minds, having won their last 36 regular season games against South Atlantic Conference competition. Hoping to keep that streak alive and looking for a major victory in a hostile environment, you can check out LMURailsplitters.com at any time over the very near winter break. For all things Lincoln Memorial Athletics related, as Coach Shirts and company aim to take down the giant that is Queens at 2 o'clock clock on Saturday. And the first half of the LMU bowling schedule may have already come to a close with 10 total events occurring between the women's and the men's sides. But as the latest national rankings were released in the middle of the week, the number 15 Lady Rail Splitters have something more to celebrate before they hit the lanes again in January. As it was announced on Wednesday that sophomore Tyra Sanchez was tabbed as the East Coast Conference Bowler of the Week. Unveiled via the ECC's Women's Bowling Weekly Report, Sanchez continues to make history for the glass ceiling breaking Lady Splitters becoming not only the first player in LMU history, but the first in the conference's history to record a perfect score of 300 last spring en route to Lincoln Memorial's NCAA Tournament Elite Eight appearance in only their second year. Earlier on in November, lightning struck twice for the Honolulu Hawaii native, gaining another perfect score early into her sophomore stretch, knocking down each and every pin against Maryland Eastern Shore at the Hawk Classic in Millsboro, Delaware. That flawless effort in the Northeast solidified Sanchez's ECC Bowler of the Week honors, posting a 20.86 frame average with a 56 strike percentage in that particular weekend, helping LMU land seventh place out of another ridiculous pool of ranked schools. Three tournaments into the 2018 through 19 schedule, Lincoln Memorial has been competing against some of the nation's most highly touted programs and will continue that trek in their next event, the first of the new year on the weekend of January 11th, heading south to Jonesboro, Arkansas for the Midwinter Invitational, part of five total events in that semester before LMU prepares to defend their ECC championship earned last season. And with the start of a new campaign inching closer on the horizon, in fact, it's less than two months away, Lincoln Memorial Baseball head coach Jeff Sixai revealed the Rail Splitters' 2019 schedule on Thursday morning, and it is a doozy. LMU competing in a total of 47 games that begins on February 1st. Coach Six and company will head into the season as winners of the last two South Atlantic Conference tournaments, automatically gaining access to the NCAA tourney in back-to-back -back seasons thanks to a program-best tying 36 wins wins in 2018. Lincoln Memorial hit their peak at the perfect time a year ago, capturing the SAC tournament title before reaching the second round of the big dance. And in 2019, the rail splitters will have a mountainous task on their hands for the majority as 25 of their 47 outings take place away from home. Among that brutal asterisk of road treks include the annual three game series against USC Aiken, which opens the schedule, a Pacers team that won 35 games last spring, a three game stand against Lynn 
Ben, who won the 2009 national title, and a doubleheader at Bellarmine, who reached a 38 win total a year ago while reaching the NCAA tournament. As mentioned, the season starts on the first day of February, and LMU will be at the Lamar Hinnon Field in Harrogate only once in that entire month, competing in a three-game series against Ohio Valley. Lincoln Memorial will not return to the Valley of Sports until the first weekend of March, when the defending SAC regular season champion Catawba Indians come to town, preceding another stretch where LMU then hits the road for seven of nine games. South Atlantic Conference play officially opens on February 22nd when LMU visits Anderson in, in a three-game set, one of four SAC road series for the splitters, also traveling to Carson Newman, Lenore Ryan, and Tusculum. The Blue and Gray will be at home much more often towards the closing stages of the season, competing in Harrogate for 14 of their last 19 meetings, with the postseason getting started on April 25th in Kodak, Tennessee. With only eight of their first 28 games seeing home field advantage, as always, you can head over to LMURailsplitters.com to find the full schedule for Rail Splitter Baseball next spring, the two-time defending SAC champions battling a gauntlet of worthy contenders. And that is all for sports as we await the weekend, but stay tuned as more LMU Community TV news is on the way right after this. What do we know about learning? It takes place beyond the pages of a book. We learn by exploring, by trying new things, by connecting, by sharing. We learn by taking chances and dreaming big. At Lincoln Memorial University, learning is beyond the books. It's everywhere. Guess what? I have some news for you. There's free food right there, junk food. Do you see that truck? <coughs> oh, jeez. It's a two Michelin star chef. All for free, ladies and gentlemen, all for free. Here we have a panzanella with summer vegetables and pesto. Enjoy. Okay. How we doing? Fantastic. So what do you got going on underneath that plate there? This food is really about to be thrown away. Yeah. Really? Is there, is there something wrong with this food? Where did you get it from? From farmer's markets. They put aside the ugly vegetables and the ugly fruits. Yeah. Carrot top, soft avocados. It was all food that was going to be discarded. Even the drink you had is made from like a little bruised peach. Did it taste it's a little like bruised? Great. It was good. The average person throws away 24 pounds of food a month. That's a lot. Isn't that a lot? That's Go visit savethefood.com for more information. Thank you. Junk food time! I love taking care of my mom. It wasn't easy at first. She learned how to better communicate her needs. And you learned how to not ignore yours. I discovered how to make healthier meals. And I discovered how much I enjoyed them. Becoming a caregiver is a learning experience for everyone. Find articles, tips, and tools from experts and others who have been in your place. The Caregiving Resource Center at aarp.org caregiving. Thanks for watching LMU Community TV News. I'm Madison Barnett, and have a great weekend.